Hey there, my name is Timothy Karambat, founder of Mintflex Labs, and today I'm bringing you an updated video of how to run the latest version of Chroma, which is currently 0.4.18 or 0.4.18, and we're going to show you how to run it on AWS. And the best part is that it is no longer complicated. I had two other videos on this channel that have probably since been unlisted or moved to unlisted that showed how to do what I'm about to do, but it required setting up multiple pieces of infrastructure. It was quite complicated. And the only reason for that is because Chroma at that time didn't have authentication. Now it does, which means that now we can get a fully locked down instance of Chroma running in pretty much five minutes. I actually made it even quicker for you because I have something for you today. So the first thing is I just want to show you what does exist and what the Chroma team has officially built and deployed. So if we go to docs.trychroma.com and go into deployment, you can see that there is a AWS walkthrough of basically they give you a little template. You can just paste it in cloud formation on your AWS account and you get an instance and that works pretty well, but it doesn't have API access locked down, which means that basically anyone who knows your machine's IP can now log into it and basically delete all of your data, read all of your data, big, big problems, right? Let's fix that. So normally you would go and copy this HTTPS S3 URL. You would just copy it from here and you would paste it in Cloudflare. I built a different one, uses the same exact stuff. In fact, out of just total clarity, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what it does. If you watched the local video, you'll see why this works and also just all the other benefits that come from using this template as opposed to possibly the official one in its current state. So you can't see me on this screen. But this is the actual JSON cloud formation data that gets run. And everything is almost the same. You can specify an SSH key name if you have one on your account. You can even specify the instance type. Although I do specify you need at least a T3 small. T3 is a cheaper class of T2 instances that performs actually better. It just has a lot of cost savings and they can run more of them. AWS wants you to run the latest stuff please use a T3. Do not go smaller than a T3 small. You will have performance issues. In fact, I don't even think Chroma will boot. If you go bigger, you can go better. One of the biggest differentiators here is the Chroma API token. Now with my template, you have to use the X Chroma token header, and then you can have a default of whatever you want to type in. This is actually an editable field. I'll show you when we deploy it. And then this is the meat and potatoes of how this whole thing works. When the instance boots, it installs two commands, Docker and SQL Lite. This is useful for if you ever want to SSH in and see what's in your Chroma instance data, like what the actual database looks like. I thought it was just a nice util, has low overhead and you might as well have it. The next thing is you actually give the EC2 user, who is what you will be, you give them access to Docker. Then we enable Docker so that it can run automatically on boot. And then we start the Docker container. So now if your instance ever, for whatever reason, restarts, Docker will automatically restart. So your container will also restart, which means that basically if AWS resets your instance for an update, you won't have to go back into AWS and restart it. That's it. And then what I do is I actually make your data persistent on the host machine itself. So if you ever want to SSH in and download your Chroma SQL Lite file and all of its embeddings, you can do that and bring it into your local machine. The current state of the official Chroma CloudFormation template actually has your data locked in to the Docker instance, which makes updating the environment keys to set the API key impossible because you would actually delete all your data doing that. This template allows you to keep your data and also always update to the latest version of Chroma, update your API keys, all of that. The next thing we do is we also just, cause this is running as the super user or root, we make a folder that is called EC2 user Chroma hyphen storage. And then we run the Docker command with the credentials that one would expect. So we're gonna expose port 8,000. We're gonna run in daemon. We're gonna set all of the proper credentials that are needed, whatever, variable you put this as is what your API key will initially begin as. And then of course we set X Chroma token, and then we specify that we're mounting the storage folder so that you can have access to your data at all times. And then we just specify the image and call it a day. And then the instance boots, that's the entire script. That's all that needs to be done. And I'll show you how to do this and also update Chroma, update your API key, all of that stuff. So in 
AWS, you're going to want to go to CloudFormation. So I have a couple of stacks running. These are unrelated. And I'm going to go to Create Stack with new resources. And you can either download this file from the link in the description, or you can go actually and copy paste it, save it locally and upload it as a file. But I'm going to show you the URL right now. And so again, this URL is in the description of this video. You copy paste it in. It's the same content as what I just showed you in VS Code. And what this will be is a nice little UI that AWS provides where we can specify the stack name. So let's call it Chroma with API key. And then our Chroma token, we'll just do SK hyphen my token. No big deal. We're going to run it on a T3 small. I don't need outside SSH access, so I'm going to leave that blank. And then here you can identify more permissions or tags, deletion policy. You can leave it as default. You don't need to touch it. And then, of course, it'll just give you a once over on everything, which is nice because when you're on AVS, you really got to know what you're doing. We click submit. And then when we will be brought to the instance or the stack that is being created, if you go to the resource tabs, you will see that there's a create in progress. Just simply wait. Uh, it'll take maybe five to 10 minutes for your EC2 instance to become fully online. And when it is, you can actually go and SSH into it just to watch it boot. Or you can simply just trust that my script works and call it a day. One of the most important tabs of the CloudFormation template is outputs. So server IP. This is the IP that we will use to connect to our Chroma instance. So while our instance is booting, let's make a Postman request that's ready to go that doesn't include the API key just to show that authentication is working. So we're going to do this, open up Postman. We're going to open up a new request here, and we're going to do HTTP because we don't have HTTPS when you just use EC2. We're going to do that, port 8000 slash, uh, what is it, API slash V1. If we get this URL and the Dockerized container and everything is running perfectly, this will return a heartbeat once our instance is live. To find out if our instance is live, you wanna to go to resources, you find the Chroma instance variable, click on this. This will bring you to EC2. Don't be worried about this. I understand AWS can be daunting to some people. We're gonna keep it really simple. Click on the line item, click on connect. Next, in EC2 instance connect, keep everything as it is, especially EC2 user, and we're going to connect again. So now we are logged in as the EC2 user. And so in order for us to see what the output is, we can actually run sudo tail hyphen F, and then the path directory is absolute var log cloud init output dot log. And you can see this is us tailing the actual output of this build script that we define this kind of stuff right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go tail that output and look at it in EC2. Okay, so we're in EC2, we've been tailing the output and you can see that it downloaded a newer image for a Chroma DB, Chroma latest, which is awesome. We wanna be on the latest. And you can pin an image too that's not in this uh, CloudFormation document, but if you wanted to, you can. Um, and then you can see that we get a container booted. So we got a container ID which means that if I am to send this request, we should get an unauthorized or actually no, this is not a protected endpoint. So we should get a nanosecond heartbeat. Let's run on a protected endpoint. So slash collections is the list of all of the collections and how many vectors are in these collections. So this is protected data. We have an API key set, so let's send it. You can see that we get unauthorized. So let's go to headers, set X, chroma, token. And I forgot what my API key was when I set it. Since we haven't changed the API key ever, we can go back to CloudFormation, go to parameters, and we can see that my token was actually SK my token. Now this is just the token that you initially set. If you are to change this token, which I'll show you how to do, um, obviously that will change. So and this data will be outdated. So please remember your API token. So back in Postman, we have the X Chroma token header, I'm gonna paste that bad boy in there, we're gonna click send. And you can see that we get, oh, collections, my bad. And you can see we get an empty array. Now this is expected. So let's add some data into our instance also so I can prove that data is persistent now. Even when we totally destroy the container or move to an upgraded version of Chroma or a different version, doesn't matter. Let me show you that. So I'm in anything LLM. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a temporary workspace called Chroma. Anything LLM is just basically a chat with your documents bot, but you can configure every single piece of it under the sun. Uh, I use it to easily update and embed documents. So our Chroma endpoint is this. Our Chroma header is X Chroma token. 
and our secret key was SK my token, right? Yeah, SK my token. So let's click save, go to our workspace, embed these two documents. You can see that anything LLM already used the key, made an authenticated request, did everything for you. And clicking send in Postman shows us that we now have a new collection, which is appropriate. That is correct. Now, let's say that I actually want to change my token. How do you do that? It's not that hard. This is where you actually have to have some experience with Docker. In the EC2 container, you're going to want to make sure that you log out and log in if you were previously logged in, because once a container boots, you get new permissions. Just if you have it, if you haven't reconnected since the container started, just refresh the page. And what we're going to do is we're going to say Docker container LS. This is means list all of my containers. We have a new container image. And also I did want to show our storage, Chroma storage. If we were to do LS Chroma storage, we have our folder and we have our Chroma SQL light file. So our data is being persisted with whatever Docker is showing. So let's kill our container and reboot it with new environment variables. So the way to do that is do Docker container stop and then we just want to paste in that. Now, once our container is stopped, we need to remove it. So let's just press up again and then do RM, which means remove. And now we should have no containers running. That's appropriate. Now, let's pull in the latest version of Chroma, or you can just run this command that I'm about to go to with just new environment variables, but let's just update Chroma while we're here, right? So in order to do that, Docker pull Chroma DB slash Chroma. Now, it updated, they updated the package two hours ago. I highly doubt that there's a new version already. If there is, their ship speed's incredible. Um, but we're on the latest version. We just made sure of that. Now, how do I update those environment variables? So I'm going to include a GitHub gist to this snippet so that you can just copy paste it and configure it however you like. If you watched the previous video on local hosting, you may have noticed that this script looks awfully similar. We're gonna modify it some so that I can just paste it into my EC2 instance. This will be included again as a GitHub gist so that you can just easily copy paste it. So the first thing to change is our mount point. So our mount point is actually different now. It is home slash EC2 user slash Chroma storage. And don't forget that trailing slash. The way that I know that is I just type PWD and I see what folder I'm in, LS Chroma hyphen storage. We know that's where our storage is. So let's go back. We know we're gonna use this. These two variables are exactly the same. I do want to expose port 8000 on my EC2 instance and map that to the 8000th port on Docker container. And the only thing that needs to change here is my token. So let's do well, let's just keep it as new token, actually. Now, all of these slashes mean that I can go to next line. So let's copy this, go into EC2, do a paste, press enter. And what we're going to see here is Docker is going to run. Again, I did not use the dash D command. So this is going to run in this terminal. So in order to escape it, I'd have to refresh. Please don't forget to put the hyphen D command. But you can see that the uh, server is now running. And if we go into Postman, run that same request. We are unauthorized. All I need to do is just change this to new token. And our data is persistent, but our environment variables have changed. And now we can see that. And again, if you forgot to actually do this and you don't want to close the Docker instance, just click refresh and reload. And you'll wind up with a new shell session and that Docker one will keep going. So that's pretty much it. Uh, when you want to tear down this instance, you can just go to the stack on CloudFormation and click delete. It'll tear down everything. It'll get rid of the instance, the security groups. It'll be blown off the face of the planet. Now, there is one limitation, and I don't think many people will care about this since authentication is really the major important part, and that is HTTPS. This EC2 instance does not have HTTPS. If you want HTTPS, you can put all of this behind an API gateway, which I'm not going to cover in this video because it's not required to get this working. Or you can choose a service like render.com where they can easily spin up instances for you. And that's probably the easiest way, but it's also the most expensive. This AWS instance will set you back probably like 12 bucks a month. T3 instances, T3 smalls are pretty cheap, whatever you feel financially comfortable with. Either way, that concludes the AWS video. I hope this helped. And this is by far way easier than the previous video. So I'm happy.